Yeah. Next yeah. is, um, as producer Kathleen has just written into her notes, let's move on to the teams. This has been um, coming for a while, Shane, and it's off the back of your Eric Cantona take last week, I want to say. Well, no, no, sorry. My take wasn't controversial. Johnny Ward said he, he was not world class and Jared Johnny chimed Ward? in. On the crappy quiz the previous week. Ah. That's what brought it back into my head. And then Jer chimed in to say he wasn't, he was good, not great. That was the quote. So uh, that, that got it into my head and Jer was like, he wouldn't be in your top 10 United players of the Premier League. We'll find out this morning. If he didn't say the Premier League here. Sorry, but ever. Never. We said ever. Either way. No, no, there's a difference. He was going to be in the top 10 either way, I promise you that. Football did not begin in 1992. It didn't. Yes, but it did for the sake of the slot. We're going to have to make it Premier League worthy because you, you can say George Best and Bobby Charlton how do we know? Yeah, we, so we've what we've done is picked uh, the top you ten. Can, you can watch the grainy uh, YouTube footage and go, okay, that's genuinely world class. They're up against the greatest footballers of their era and they're absolutely dominating them. The Benfica game. Like, mm. are you saying you can't deduce that George Best was world class because you didn't see it with your own eyes? No, no, no he was, but we, would, we wouldn't know how to compare him to more modern players and where to put him in the list. Well, that's Colm's argument, is that I didn't well, see him and so therefore I can't... If you include every player that's played for United ever, then you really are going kind of almost like an objective, knowledgeable list of these are actually the 10 Duncan best Edwards. Ever. Duncan Edwards is in the top 10, but like where do we put him? We don't know. So it's uh, so the a focus. little bit like I can't learn any, anything from history because I didn't see it. There's just a, I just see that teetering into the... So this is the off top the, top ten off the edge of the abyss. There, no. Myself and Colin have picked our top ten players of the Manchester United Premier League year of ninety two on from ten down to one ranked. I had Brian Robson originally, but I will own up and say I took him out because Premier League era. I know Robson teetered into that era, but he had his probably his best years at United the late eighties, early nineties before that. So that's why Robson's not in it. There's a reason why Law Law Best Charlton aren't in it. Mm-hmm. So what was, your, what was your what was your twist of logic for Brian Robson's not in it because Premier League era. So his his best years at United were eighty nine and early nineties, so that's the reason why he's. This not This is in. some weird mental gymnastics no, bullshit going on here. United pl- best ten players of the Premier League era. No, well, wasn't that wasn't okay. You've, you've Basically, we have to have seen them ourselves. You broke yeah. the rules. That's but, it. Uh, you that's did. It. You have to see them yourself. You saw Brian Robson. Yeah, but uh, right on the borderline. Yeah, well, that doesn't. I was, like, I was young. Oh, you know, I wonder remembered it. I saw the last year of Roy Keane where he was at Celtic. He Here's was my shit at Celtic. This, like. is, this is my list. On the, on, on, so for the people listening on podcast or listening, Paul Scholes is your number one. Is let, this in order? Me, don't spoil this. Is this in order? It is in order. What? This is get top, out. Top ten man. Get out let me now. let me let the listeners know. Get out. No. That, get no. out. I'm gonna defend them here. Okay. Can we get it back up on screen so I can remember it? So ten Dennis Irwin, nine Ruud van Nistelrooy, eight Nemanja Vidić, seven Peter Schmeichel, six Cristiano Ronaldo, five Eric Cantona. Four Wayne Rooney, three Roy Keane, two Ryan Giggs, and one Paul Scholes. Scholes, the greatest midfielder of the Premier League era, deserves to be the number one Manchester United player of the Premier League era. Both number one is a big shout. It's a big shout, but big shout. He couldn't get in the Man United team for a long period of time. Big Listen, shout. He, he could not get in the Man United team. He was for the ages. fulcrum of, of he was a sub, a treble winning Manchester United team, who was suspended for the final, notably, but. The likes of Van, Van der Sar, Stam, uh, Cole, Solskjaer, but Parchi Sung, of course, <laughs> close close to the team, uh, close to the top 10. But uh, for me, Paul Scholes, undoubtedly, yeah. Not an one. automatic choice all the time. F- fell out with uh, Ferguson to the point where he, he left, he, he quit for a while, and then he actually quit. So Cla- uh, class recognises class. That the Real Madrid uh, players knew Roy Keane is a far superior player to Paul Scholes. I'd Scholes. agree with that, but that Scholes quitting thing, that was one match the League Cup against Arsenal in 2001. And he didn't apologise a few days Scholes later. continued. Scholes won the second Champions League with United in 08. Roy Keane wasn't, wasn't around at that point. He, yeah, and because he we're talking. retired. I understand now that like um, the, the vagaries of age seem to somehow prevent you from being considered a footballer for the things that you did before that happened. No, it, It's a matter of opinion and this is subjective, granted. Yes. But yeah. for me, Paul Scholes is the greatest Manchester United footballer of the Premier League era. Fact. <sighs> uh, your opinion's wrong. Well, that's okay. It's good, that, it's good that you've completely ruined no. your argument here by like uh, How? Derailing it. But put Paul Scholes number one. Well, you have Roy Keane number one then. I'm not a man. Yeah, well, there you, you say, I, would, I, I would definitely. 700 have, appearances, like, 150 goals. He played from 93 to 2013. He was, it was a fulcrum of 20 years of that era, Paul Scholes. Like, <laughs> longevity does count. Yeah, I'm sorry, Roy. You left United in 05. Like, of course that matters here. Scholes went on to win another Champions League. He scored a screamer in the Champions League semi final. Can I have a look at the list again? Here's the list again. <laughs> There's two Irish in the list as well. We've so got Skulls is one, Giggs is two, Keane is three. I mean, Giggs ahead of Keane. But anyway, uh, Rooney's four, Cantona's five. So no Rio Ferdinand. 
No, I had to pick between. Uh, for me, I wanted to pick between Rio or Vidic, and I went with Vidic. Uh. I, I just, I don't know, something about Nemanja Vidic. It's Schmeichel ahead of ahead of them, right? Yeah, I, I and, could, could have okay. had Vatersar in there, but Schmeichel for me. Uh, oh. All right, so it's uh, Aldo, six. Uh, yeah, number six. Oh, Ow. that's very far down. For, it's always, but it's not that far down. Number six, sixth best United Premier League player of like that's pretty high. You know, someone in the comments could help you with that. He was 03 to 09. I did my elbow the other day. Someone says, Winner, the guy that broke the club's leading goal scoring record, yet Skulls is better. Yeah, but, yeah, but Skulls wasn't a striker. Like, different players. Like, no parchy songs, says Brian. Exactly. Yeah, you, bottled close. you bottled it. You bottled it. World class. You, he was world class and you bottled it. Sh- Shane says, and it's not me, Paul Skulls wouldn't tie Gerard's boots. You must be fucking stop, stop, joking. Stop, stop, stop. We'll come to the comments. Sorry, we'll on. come to the comments. But also, Park Ji Sung didn't make your list, even though Park Ji Sung was world class. A lot of world class players. I, I never said he was in the top 10 United players of the Premier League era. <coughs> Park, Park was brilliant. Okay, so Lee Keegan's not in the top 10 players of the Premier League era. Different. Is he? <laughs> he didn't play in the Premier League. Different. What bullshit Premier League Lee era Keegan, is I, your equivalent? I have been on record saying Lee Keegan is the greatest male footballer of all is time. A color, in the colour television era, I'd say. Lee Keegan is the greatest male player of all time. And I've said that. I said that the day Your I said it. teammates say that. Yeah, I said it. So, Right, go on, Colm. Throw it up there. So, what I went for is this Andy Cole, number 10. Did you, are you the only one? Did, did they put your picture on yours? Did you, yeah. Oh, I missed it, sorry. Colm yeah. looks like he's going to a wedding. I dressed up for it. Yeah, that's how right. so, so seriously I take this. Andy Cole, number 10. Dennis Irwin, 9. David Beckham, 8. Which I think was actually harsh and Beckham now that I put him in 8. 7 was Schmeichel. 6 was Paul Scholes. I put Scholes 6. I think that's fair for Scholes. 5, Van Nistelrooy. 4, Cantona. <laughs> 3, Rooney. 2, Roy Keane. 1, Cristiano. Now, going back, Andy Cole, what an underrated player. Mm. I, was look, I was looking back at Andy Cole's statistics there last night, right? So, in the 98-99 season, 17 Premier League goals, right? The year before, 97-98, 15 Premier League goals. That was actually arguably more impressive because that was the first season without Cantona and Roy Keane was injured for the vast majority of it. Yeah. And then following the treble winning season, when understandably, you know, you, it'd be a bit of a lull after that extraordinary season of achievement, he scored uh, 19 Premier League goals in 28 Premier League games in 1999-2000. Gone into the PFA Team of the Year that year as well. And in the 1993-94 season, just you know, before his move to United with Newcastle, he scored a bundle of goals and got Young Player of the Year and Golden Boot in the Premier League. Then you have some of the highlights of Andy Cole's goals. The Spurs, yeah, 99. Valley over 99 to win the league for United. The Barcelona goal that same season with Dwight York, 1-2 with York and Cole all the way down. Juventus in the semi-final when he taps it in, full steam ahead Barcelona, iconic Clive Tilsley. Uh, commentary, which was uh, to help you understand this a bit more. <laughs> uh, then he was a great man for a scissor volley. Not quite a bicycle kick, yeah. not quite a volley. He scored two very similar goals against Leicester and Charlton at Old Trafford. There's the chip at home to Everton. Great man for a chip. Lovely, lovely technique on his little dinks. And then a great finish at Highbury, which is actually an often forgotten goal from the 1996-97 season. Uh, went around Lukic, the goalkeeper. Very tight angle, a bit mm. like the Mark Hughes goal against Barcelona in the Cup Winners' Cup 1991 final. Very tight angle, daisy cut finish into the far corner. Point is, Andy Cole, one of the greatest Premier League strikers ever, yeah. let alone Manchester United forwards, and very underrated. We're only picking very what he did for United, though, of course. Well, that's why I think he should be top 10, and he just makes it into the list. The rest, would Dwight, York, speak would, for would Dwight York not make it ahead of him? I was really close to picking York. Mm. Very, very Cole's close. Ahead of York. like York's Cause best cause season was better than anything. York had scored one more goal than Cole in the treble winning season. And the reason but I went for Cole. He also had the same number of assists as Beckham that season. And the reason I went for Cole is he did it over a longer stretch and scored more spectacular goals and more memories for me. So that's why I had Andy Sorry, Cole there. These comments are driving me fucking insane. I'm not, insane, I'm not sure they were more spectacular. Uh, I would say more spectacular. So some of the goals that Cole scored Ronaldo number one York, had, York scored very simple brilliant striker goals but no. Cole had an array of amazing finishes and the other thing to say about Andy Cole said the other way around one of, one of the greatest Premier League scorers and never took a penalty yeah loved to go from play which, imagine he took penalties but he was so, number 10 in your list he's number 10 but I like a lot of our list crosses over but I just wanted to highlight Cole because he wasn't in yours he wasn't in mine no uh, and then look the Cantona thing when I heard he last week was like there's no doubt that Cantona was absolutely what did Brilliant you have Cantona? United, four. Yeah, I had five, yeah, yeah. Four. And I think uh, he never did it in Europe, that's true. But United weren't doing it in Europe at that time as well. It wasn't With just respect, Cantona. You've, you've both totally 
broken the what? rules of this, which was which was uh, greatest Man United players of all time. I, which I was, had, the whole, I, was the whole point. He was right? in my list. He was in my top it 10 It wasn't list. Premier League. Though. That, that's just also, like a... Also, uh, Cantona would make top 10 of all time yeah, for his the, impact the, on the club. The only additions are easily. best lot Charlton. So he would have he would have made me in Collins' list anyway. Easily would have made top it. Top 10. You, he joined the club in 1992. Paul McGrath's not making a list. Brian Robson would have made the list. Brian Robson, Paul McGrath. sneaking in. 93, 94, Your grandfather is bullshit in. I don't know if McGrath makes the United top 10. He makes the man of the match, man of the match in an FA Cup final. Yeah, but he makes the when Villa they weren't winning anything. Ireland top ten of all time, but the United the United defence is, is uh, jam packed. I think he was better than Nemanja Vidic. No, yeah, I don't disagree. But you know, Vidic, Nemanja Vidic comes, comes into a team that's already winning leagues. Vidic for you stick Paul McGrath in a team that's already winning leagues and he's World Footballer of the Year. Yeah, yeah, but then Stan was on the the treble team. You, you got to like, got to put these things into context. You know, but Paul McGrath was a genius, but he, he couldn't get into this eleven because it's the Premier League eleven. Also, where did you have Rooney? I had Rooney number four. Yeah, you see, again, quite slightly underrated. The club's greatest scorer. Where did you have him? Three. Three. Yeah, but I think he, as long as he's in the top five, people are going mad in the comments that he wasn't higher. But sorry, like some of the people given out about uh, Paul Scholes. I, did I Cristiano was he there for long enough? Did he do enough? Yeah, I think the reason oh, I, the reason I have number one is he was basically two players in one spell in that first spell, six years. So from two thousand and three to two thousand and six, if Alex Ferguson was an impatient manager. Ronaldo could easily have been shown a door because for from 04 to 06 he was a, basically a frustrating tricky winger yeah. who Ruud van Nistelrooy famously got very impatient with mm. and then the 2006 World Cup happened and that wink between Portugal and England when Rooney got sent off and Ronaldo winks to the bench Alex Ferguson gets the two together when they come back after the World Cup we're going to resolve this and the first game of the following season they beat Fulham 5 at Old Trafford and they combined for one of the greatest goals United scored that season Ran the length of the pitch to two of them, but one twos. And from 2006 to 2009, his second half of his first spell, he was a goal machine. Yeah. So he was two players. Started off with this very, very tricky winger that we had never seen the likes of before, really. I mean, like the Sporting Lisbon friendly is the iconic match that all the players afterwards were like, we got to sign this kid, he's amazing. Mm. Ferguson, don't worry, I'm on it. Then his debut comes on against Bolton. We heard the story of Cristiano Fitzgerald that inspired that name. And then he was very, very inconsistent for three years. But it was all worth the wait because Ferguson knew this guy was going to be world class. And from 06 to 09, he was so brilliant for that three-year spell. That that's why he's number one on the list for me. And then obviously his second spell as well. He scored 24 goals last season, which is easily forgotten considering yeah. what he tarnished his whole legacy this season. All right. But still for me, the, the best United player of the Premier League era because he was insane.